the, the avian inner ear has this really remarkable ability to regenerate uh, sensory receptors after injury. So uh, deafening a bird, for example, uh, it turns out to be a very temporary uh, thing. Uh, within several weeks, uh, all of the, the dead sensory cells, the damaged sensory cells, will be replaced by new cells. And, uh, and, and, and this is you know, very different than what you uh, uh, encounter in the human ear where damage tends to be permanent and the, uh, the, the sensory deficit that results from that damage is, is permanent. So we, we hope that by understanding the basic biology of this regenerative process in the avian ear, we'll gain some insights into the uh, you know, just the underlying biology that will allow us to then move on to develop uh, therapies for inducing a similar kind of regeneration in, in the human inner ear. The thing that really makes me optimistic is the fact that this, this happens so robustly in so many different animal species that it's, it's, it's not a fluke, it's really the norm and, and, and we have to you know, find out how to uh, bring that norm into uh, the into the clinic, really, and into the human ear. The aim in my lab is to uh, elucidate why are fish able to regenerate their hair cells, which genes are imp important for regeneration, uh, and once we understand how regeneration works in the fish, we can then go into mammals such as the mouse model and figure out where is this uh, process blocked. And this will give us then tools to figure out uh, or to, to attack this problem in the mouse. So why, how can we regenerate hair cells in the mouse um, by manipulating these particular genes that, are, that we know are important in the fish? Yeah, I'm, I'm very optimistic that we will figure out, first of all, how do non-mammalian uh, vertebrates regenerate their hair cells, and then this will give us a, a clue of how, to coax, how we can coax mammalian hair cells into re regeneration as well.